Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rate the Record podcast, episode 37. Woo! We're off the roulette wheel now. We're off into foreign territory. What? I don't even know what to say about 37, but that's what I said. 30, 37. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's one of those numbers that just seems strange because both numbers are odd. Yeah, and you're, 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 you're kind of past your the the mid 30s there you're not quite at 40 yet. you're like in that yeah. middle section so no one cares about you kind of like when you're in your 20s yeah oh, hell yeah. No, that's, yeah and your hosts who are no longer in their 20s are chris and uh that's a lie and i'm savannah oh you're damn close to being 30 you'll get there soon don't worry <laughs> one of these years you'll get the 20 you'll get the 30 <laughs> yeah when i stop being a liar exactly can't wait for that day but i think i'll be dead by then <laughs> Anyways, yes, you have joined us here on the Race Rick podcast. So thank you very much. I heard that. Thank you very much for being a part of the podcast today. We sure hope you have a lot of fun just listening to us talk like this. But we're going to do more talking, obviously, because we have to talk about albums. So if you like what you see today, make sure you hit like, subscribe, comment, rate, sh- sh- ra- hold on. Like, subscribe, comment, rate, share, follow. I combined like three words there for a second. All of those things are fantastic. It really helps out the channel. So we would have really appreciate if you did all of that. Kind of like, you know, boost us up in the charts and everything especially on the audio platforms like uh, spotify and apple podcasts i'm gonna say music but i think you can listen to us on apple music that's irrelevant regardless wherever you're listening to us uh leave ratings and reviews boost us up in the charts that way people like you awesome people like you can go ahead and check out the podcast just like you have and you know the more the merrier We, we welcome everyone in do you know how much easier it would have been to just say like us or we'll find you well, you just did, so thank you very much for <laughs> filling the gap. No problem. And of course, on YouTube, you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, not just to make sure that you catch up on all the latest episodes and videos that we go ahead and unleash upon you, but at the point of recording this and releasing this, we're not quite at 100 subs yet. When we get to 100 subscribers, we're going to be doing some record giveaways. That's right. We give away one record every month that we're over 100 subscribers. If you want to be a part of that, and I know you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You might get a free record out of it, and maybe you'll just enjoy our content and stick around for a while. That'd be very much appreciated. Yeah, and the more subscribers we get, then we can turn on monetization, and then I can get some money to get a soundboard. So every time you say something like that, I can just press a button, and all you get is, woo! Yes, you can have a a sound effects board, like just a trigger pad full of samples of clapping. and That's all I want, and like the... The, uh, I, I can't recreate it, but like that really obnoxious horn, you know? Oh, the wah, like yeah, the, yeah. the air yeah, horn. Yeah, the air yeah, horn. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, if you want a fun Savannah soundboard, you can always visit us at kofi.com slash write the record. If you want to financially support the show, that was a great segue. Hell if yeah. you want to financially support the show, there that is optional, but it is com- there. We're going to be releasing bonus content. We actually just talked about uh, the first bonus episodes that will be going up on Kofi. Yeah. They'll be up there soon. And you want to catch them, so by all means, ko-fi.com slash rate the record. But you can find that on rate the record.ca as well. All of our socials, all of our streaming links, and ko-fi.com, they're all there. Go ahead and check it out. Hell yes. Okay, so all the big plugs are done now. So we can actually start talking about today's L episode and the album that we're talking about, which is the White Stripes, White Blood Cells. Well, of course, you already knew that from the uh, title just by looking at it. But before we get any further, we've got to make sure that we're all cool with things here. We're talking about music. I know people can be high and mighty about it sometimes, but we want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Even if we agree and disagree on things, we can just be cool, have fun talking about music. And the disclaimer is as follows. The following thoughts and opinions we're going to discuss regarding this album are strictly of our own personal interests. We are not professional music reviewers. We are simply two friends having fun discussing and listening to music. We encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter in each episode, but we do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence based on the opinions of ourselves or others. This podcast is a casual and for fun fun project, I was going to say experience, and you are (laughs) welcome to take what we say regarding the albums we rate with a grain of salt. I mean, salt in the eyes. I, I could have said po- experience, I guess. Why not? <laughs> Pocket salt. Yeah. Oh, we made that joke too many times. Pocket and Hasha yeah. and King yeah. of the Hill. What? Anyways. King yeah, of the Hill. but like, I, I feel like I need like a catchphrase that's not super lame. But don't so steal Dale just, Gribbles. No, but if I can piggyback on someone else's that's already popular and just change it enough that I can get away from copyright claims, I think I'm okay. We in Canada, we call that fair dealing, where you can use someone else's copyright but change it just enough to make it your own. Exactly, (laughs) it's called fair use in America. 
just change one capital letter to a lowercase and you're fine. you're fine. More or less. People rip off Metallica's logo all the time, but we're not talking about Metallica today. We oh. are talking about the White Stripes, the duo okay. from Place in America. I don't know. It's because it's. I didn't write the description. Savannah did. So if anything, we I should did. just cut to that right now. Savannah is going to tell us a little bit about the White Stripes and their debut album, White Blood Cells. It's not their debut album, Chris, but I will tell you what was. Good that, <clears throat> good that I'm being corrected then. Excellent. The White Stripes formed in Detroit, Michigan in 1997 by pseudo-siblings and real-life ex-husband and wife, Jack and Meg White. They rose to prominence during the early 2000s as lo-fi garage rock became pretty popular. The White Stripes released a self-titled album in 1999, the album Distill in 2000, and White Blood Cells in 2001. Well, the, fuck me, right? Anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, I know, there's more. The album Elephant in 2003 was the album that really thrust them into consciousness and onto the radio, but we aren't talking about that one. We're talking about White Blood Cells. As I said... White Blood Cells was released on July 3rd, 2001, and spawned four singles. Hotel Yorba, Fell in Love with a Girl, Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground, and We're Going to Be Friends. The album was recorded in Memphis, Tennessee by Jack White himself and released on the record label Sympathy for the Record Industry. The album was ranked on many best of 2001 lists and Spin Magazine called it the best album of 2001. It peaked at 61 on the Billboard Top 200 and has been certified platinum in the US and the UK and only gold in Canada. Someone actually named it best album of 2001. I'm not saying the album's terrible or anything. You'll know my opinion soon enough, but this no. was the best album of 2001, according to what, Spin? Yes, um, I believe, well, I I did not write down what year that was, um, that title was given. I would assume 2002, um, because if it was any later than that, um, I'm sure that uh, Garage Rock has sort of taken a you know back started to slump to, a little bit yeah, yeah yeah taking a backseat to other uh other styles since then but so. then garage rock came back in the early 2010s <laughs> it definitely did i i i don't want to diverge too much from the topic but i mean like we do anyways um i'm starting to notice that kind of like a disco-y sort of 70s vibe is kind of the sort of musical style that's a little more popular and kind of people are dipping into it now I, for the last 15 years, any new music, I'm like, I don't care for it. I don't care for this mumble rap. I don't care for this, you know, guys in flat top hats playing banjos with suspenders. Don't care. All this 70s shit, super down for it, living for it. There's so much more new music that's coming out that I really like. You should listen to Silk it's, Sonic. It is wild. Yeah. If you if that's what you dig right now, listen oh, to Silk I, Sonic. It's yeah. a new Bruno's Mars project. I can't remember who else is in it. I'm going to get my ass kicked for not remembering. But my God, he went away from the poppy stuff and got into the Motown stuff that he he's oh. he's good for. So yeah. listen to Silk Sonic. Go ahead and like that. Yeah, yeah. So someone requests that. We'll cover that too. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I I am so into that stuff. So it uh, these styles and uh, sort of I guess trends come and go, but uh, some of them really hit the mark. So, they really yeah. do. And yeah. I guess this one hit the mark for the time since it was so well acclaimed yeah. by this one. I mean, this album, White Blood Cells by the White Stripes. So yeah. I guess it's about time we start talking about it a little bit since it is the topic of today's episode. 16 yeah. songs, but it would fool you because it is only a 40 minute album. So <laughs> some some yeah. awfully short songs on here. So let's just get right into it. So song number one, one of the singles, Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground. So I'm just going to preface, um, I guess, my review. Um, this was my choice for this week. Um, I absolutely loved the White Stripes when I was in high school. I would say maybe only a couple of years after this was this album was released. Um, I thought Jack White was cute. So I started listening to him. And then, you know, I just it was something different, something my parents didn't listen to it kind of sets me apart type of thing. So. I, I just wanted to, to preface that. I guess a lot of emotional or personal connection to some of these songs. Uh, this song sort of being one of them. 
um, this entire album, there's so many songs on it that I learned so little of them on guitar, like enough that you listen to it going, oh, I know that song, but not enough to play maybe past the first 15 seconds. And this is one of those songs. <laughs> I feel like 15 seconds is a good quarter of the song, too, because they're all so goddamn short. <laughs> That's a good point. That is a good point. So, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied with my progress on this song. It's just the uh, the intro sort of down the neck, very overdriven sound that is definitely more prominent to come on the album. Yeah, well, in just the opening riff alone of this song, like, I've heard so many artists use that riff too. I, I I don't know the timeline of things, but I know like Green Day using Brain Stew. I think Danko Jones used the exact same rhythm too. Just like I don't know the, the, that just the 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 riff in the beginning. I just immediately noticed. I'm just like I've heard this way too many times already for this to be an album opener. Yeah, oh, like yeah. I, I do love like the the like that dirty garage rock type of tone on everything in this track too. I think that sounds great. But just yeah that. That riff is hard to be taken seriously when I've heard it so many times by so many other bands. And I think even, like, Led Zeppelin might have used it at one point, like, way the hell back when. So, I mean, like, this this riff structure alone has been around forever and, like, replicated multiple times. See, I don't think I notice, um, but you just saying that, it kind of reminds me of when my brother was very young. Um, he would always say that he hated tomato soup, but he always loved red soup. My mom would make red soup and he would love it. So I feel like these riffs, if they're repackaged enough, even if they're just tweaked a little, I'm like, oh, something new. This is OK. And I, I don't even know this. Well, I, yeah, out of the variations of her, like Brain Stew by Green Day was always my favorite of the bunch just because of the way yeah. it was done. And just I don't know, I like how slow and chunky that song is, like in the, the verses and everything like that. So yeah. I don't know. But this one, it's not that it sounds bad. It's not that I hate it. And I didn't tank the score for it for that reason or anything like that. Yeah. But I don't know, just noticing, like, I'm just like, oh, this is your starter. You could have, like, literally used any other song on this album. <laughs> like, no, this is your starter. Like, I do yeah. appreciate, like, the raw feeling of this song. And a lot of songs on this album, realistically, in hindsight, as compared to some of their later works that would come down. But, like, again, we have the gift of hindsight, like, being yeah. able to look at their entire discography. And the fact that they haven't done anything in, what, like, 12, 13 years, probably even longer than that. Uh, I think their last album came out in... It was like Get Behind Me Satan, uh, I believe. I I want to say that came out in 2012 or earlier. That or Icky Thump. It was like either one of those were like uh, the last ones. Uh, Get Behind Me Satan. I, I God damn it. Now I don't remember. Which I yeah, wasn't too fond of that song. Of but that's not even on this album anyway, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I did make a note saying, as I just said, probably not the best album starter, which... I'm trying to think, like, of all the songs and stuff, what, what would have really worked? There is a song coming up. Um, it is like less than a minute long, and I think it just it sounds. It honestly sounds like a like just a, a rehearsal in studio. Yeah. Uh, and I'll I'll bring that up when we get there. But the idea is, I think that would have just been a good way to start the album, just with like this like weird little what sounds like a rehearsal, and then it breaks into a song. Yeah. So I don't know, but like this song had good energetic moments in it, so it had that going for it. Uh, my my last note is I like the the sort of rough vocals. Um, I I like that it kind of sounds like he's trying to do some pop diva vibrato in and out of this song. Um, I I can't describe where it is without replicating it and god knows i can't fucking replicate it i'm so. the one who ends up singing like every week <laughs> yeah i'll describe it and you, you'll do it i'm like yeah it's that one um but yeah i i hear some things where he, he goes up a little higher and then kind of just sort of up down up down up down and quick succession succession and it just seems like he's kind of playing with his voice a little bit um, but all I think is like Mariah Carey pop diva and I love it. Well, it, I, I think a lot of what Jack White does in this album at the very least is like, it sounds like he's doing those vocal theatrics, but in a very tired and lazy way. Like yes. uh, it was like grungy oh God, in yes. a way. Yeah. Like this song is one of them. Like the, the, it just sounds like lazy vocals. That's not an insult, by the way. That's just literally the style. It's kind of like Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Where it's like, it sounds lazy, but it suits the genre completely. And you just love it for that reason. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. So the vocals in the song sound lazy, but I can hear what I, I know what you're talking about when like you, there's like these slight kind of theatrics. They're not very like, like pushed forward or anything like that. Like yeah. exaggerated, but they are kind of there if you listen close enough. 
Yeah, it's like he just wants to distinguish the end of the verse, um, uh, I guess, against the beginning of the verse where he said the same word or something, you know, kind yeah, of just distinguish yeah. that. So, that, oh, yeah, that's rep- all repeating the phrase, yeah, I know exactly yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, because yeah. he does that multiple times in every verse. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're very good at clarifying my mumbled words, and then you repeat it. I'm like, yeah, that's what I meant. Well, because we're literally <laughs> reviewing the exact same album at the same time, so like I yeah, better yeah. catch on to something at some point. Yeah, yeah, it's very helpful. Thank you. But that's all I got for that one. No, yeah, that's fine. And actually, we could probably just clarify this to the audience too, because we discussed this off camera. We don't have a lot of notes for all these songs because of, with how short they are and how minimal the production is, it's hard uh, to have too many notes. Yeah. So. Like it's- that we might we might fly through some of these yeah you can't really uh speak about you know oh all of the atmosphere created unless you're just saying oh it sounds a little echoey because you know maybe the microphone is two feet farther than it was the last song or you know yeah, it's like so little s- some of my keywords every single week soundscape sonically texture those aren't really here this week i mean texture i think i say once or twice in a couple of songs yeah but other than that like yeah, my keywords aren't here this week. I'm lost now and just rambling just to kill time. Texture, dirt. I guess so, huh? It's kind of muddy and garage rock. So we'll move on to the second song now. Another single, which was probably one of the lesser known singles, I guess. Hotel Yorba. Uh, like, and I feel like this is, maybe this is the whole album. I don't know how it was recorded, but like, it feels like it was recorded on like two microphones. Yeah. Like you can you can hear the distance of the instruments behind the mics, but then like the vocals are like obviously right up front. Yeah. So it's like it's really different in that way, but I don't know. It kind of gives that kind of indie garage feel, especially for when it came out. Like indie music wasn't as prevalent as it became like a decade later, so to speak. Yeah. Or like even just a few years later, realistically. But yeah, like uh, so it, it, maybe in that aspect, it's a little ahead of its ahead of its time. But at the same time, it's kind of borrowing from past aspects of like previous years and genres and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, this is a bouncy kind of like folky little number too. So I, I that that much about it was fun. The problem is it, it feels like it's trying to be more energetic than it actually is. Yeah. Like you can hear the energy there, you can see it and everything like that, but you just don't feel it. And that's that that is the biggest difference between like what you're hearing and what you experience when you're listening to a song like this. Yeah. Um I I like it. I've always liked it. Um I seem where I tend to take this song for just what it is. Um, It's fun. I would totally pull this out around a campfire to get everyone involved, you know, before inevitably starting Wonderwall. But it's a good thing that I don't know how to play Wonderwall, but I do know how to play this song. This is one where I actually learned the entire song super goddamn easy because all it is is just basic chords. Um, I, yeah, I, the, all I can picture is them coming out on stage to play this song and then Jack being like, oh, Meg, can you go grab me something? She goes back there and he just comes out and plays guitar and just stomps the drums on his own. (laughs) Because like with this song, I feel like you don't literally need two people. Like you could just, you know, one of those, uh, those guys that has the drum on his back and he's just stomping and playing on his own. Super impressive. Yeah. You know, realistically, for a lot of songs in this album, and a lot of the white stripes in general, you, you could probably get away with that because Meg, Meg White has this this way of just having like these quarter notes on the cymbal, snare, bass, snare, bass, snare. Like she's she's not like an amazing drummer. She's she's good for what she does and like this this like little kind of minimal production indie genre type thing. Yeah. But yeah, so but what she does is so simplistic for more often than not that you could yeah probably just get away with yeah doing it yourself. But she's made more than a million dollars doing that. Like, well, there is she, a fucking niche and area for everyone. Although, did you hear the uh, practical joke a handful of years ago that she was replacing Neil Peart and Rush? Oh my god, I did. And people actually fell for it. Like, yeah. there's like, I, it's, I didn't even fall for it for a second. Like, you know, this is just this is like the Onion or something. It's got to be like this isn't yeah. real. Yeah, you got to take one end of the spectrum and force them into the other end of the spectrum. And it's like if Neil Peart was uh, was covering for her, everyone would be like, no, he's way better than that. And it's like, why would he like, OK, he did play with Vertical Horizon. So who knows? But but just like if Neil Peart struggled to play subdivisions or not subdivisions. Yeah, I think it was subdivisions. Yeah. 
or Tom Sawyer, either or one of those ones. But like, you think yeah. if you struggle to play one of those songs, you think Meg White's gonna be able to do it? Yeah, and then she <laughs> does, and then just wows everybody. Hey, hey, blow my socks off! I'm ready for hell it. Yeah. Hell yeah! Um, the only other note I have for the song though is that I appreciate the fact that the most these songs in general, not just this one, are like super short. This one's like two minutes and ten seconds. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just these brief ideas turned into these like really quick tunes. And it's definitely the biggest strength I feel, especially on an album like this, not counting future albums, but like this one in particular, the faster songs are the best strength because like, it doesn't feel like a lot of these songs go anywhere. So, I mean, like if they were to carry on for like four minutes, it would yeah. feel like way too long. So yeah, these quick songs work perfectly for them. Yep. Um, it's very straightforward. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus. It's incredibly catchy. That's that's what it is. It just reminds me of one of those campfire songs that you hear at like a summer camp that you're going to play for kids. But I mean, like I no no offense to to camps or kids. I like this song. No, all offense to camps and kids. Stay away from the show. It's 18 plus only. I'm going to put boobies on the screen now. There you go. Oh, no. Now, 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 oh, you can, now, now you can't have kids in this at all. Oh, oh, no, and actually, I'm not going to do that because then we'll get kicked off YouTube. Let's <laughs> put up two cantaloupes or something, but then even cantaloupes No, no, no. Disgusting. I'll put up two blue-footed boobies, the birds. There you go. There you go. Boom. Just, I just solved our issues. I'm going to cut Done. this part out just so that way I don't have to explain the joke to people. <laughs> Fantastic. Done. <laughs> all right. So song number three, I'm finding it harder to be a gentleman. That's what I say every single day. I swear to God. Oh, my God. For some reason, this song just feels like an open mic song. I don't, there's something about it that just feels like, like campus pub at noon when I'm just trying to eat my rap and somebody is up there and they're like, oh, no one's playing the house, uh, house drums. Well, I brought my guitar and then they play the song. I, I have a note kind of like that a little later on the album, how it feels like an in-school performance type thing, but <laughs> that, that'll that come soon. Or as I usually say, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. Um, this track is weird because I it, this felt so much like the first song to me, Dead Leaves of the Dirty Ground. Like yeah. just, just the way it's structured and played out and just how everything kind of overlaps. Like, I don't know. And it's almost the same length. The short by like, six or seven seconds i think something along the lines of that so like i don't know i kept getting first vibes of them was like well great we're already repeating ourselves and we're three songs into a 16 song album uh i do have a note about that farther along as well excellent and actually i probably do too because spoiler alert a lot of the compositions feel the same yep um i do like jack white's softer vocals i i think it is nice when he can pull it off and like because he 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 does like a lot of exaggerations in his voice, especially in the more energetic moments, and that's fine. Like the, he sounds fine doing that too in his own little style. Yeah. But there's something about his soft vocals that just work really well, and I really like it. So the song did well for me. Um, they added an electronic, uh, an electric piano in this one, uh, and I thought that was a welcome touch too. Kind of a bit of texture in this very minimal production. There you go. I use my keyboard texture. <laughs> but overall, the song was kind of a bit of a sleeper. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not a terrible song, but I mean, nothing grabs me about this one. I I agree with that. Um, although I am starting to appreciate these slower songs a lot more than I did before, because as someone who would listen to like pop punk and like thrash metal in high school, like I always wanted something loud what and mix. just in there. Well, the K okay, just side note, how it started was I really got into simple plan. Okay, it gets better, gets better. So I listen to Simple Plan and I would see the t-shirts that they would wear and then I'd look up the bands, right? And they were a lot of punk shirts. So I'm listening to that and I'm like, oh, like I like Simple Plan, but I want something faster. So I started listening like pop punk. Then I started listening to punk music and I'm like, I want something faster than this. Then I started listening to Anthrax and I started listening to like thrash metal. And then I was like, all right, it's too fast. And then I started listening to prog rock where it's all slow, drawn out guitar wankery. But, uh, but I always wanted something that like, you know, gave me life that gave me something. But now I feel a lot more calm, a lot more settled and I'm kind of over all that. So these slower sort of more, I guess, reserved songs, I, I guess, in comparison to say the next song, um, it's, I, I'm appreciating them a lot more. Um, the piano, I enjoyed it. Hearing that come in, that was cool. Uh, it did kind of sound like 
the guitar seemed mixed a little farther into one side and the piano into the other. So they weren't just fighting each other for all of my attention, which I found was kind of nice attention that was given to that sort of separated a little bit. Uh, aside from that, don't know what else to say. Well, there's not a whole lot to say. Two minutes and 54 seconds under your average song. Yeah. And I, I got my all my note too. As I said, it felt like the first song, kind of a sleeper, not terrible, but not great. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on to the next song. Uh, one of the shortest songs on the album and probably the hit that most people will likely remember. Yes. At least for the classic era is fell in love with a girl. One minute and 50 seconds. Very short. And this I mean, like used to be my favorite. Well, because not only is it an obviously recognizable track, but it, the video is iconic. Oh, yes, it's just that's the language like of yeah. yeah, like the entire yeah. thing. And it it, 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 it's funny how cheap it looks, but the work in uh, detail that went into it is insane. Like, just in the video alone, it, I think it comes towards the end where like they have the Lego figure kind of do this like kind of like they bring up the guitar neck and then bring it back down like this and just in the motion. Just the detail and how that looks in Lego and like it's not even super detailed Lego when they're doing it, but just the way it looked, it looked super cool and that always stood out to me. But I don't know. I can only imagine how painstaking it was to make that video. Um, it couldn't have been too pain painstaking to make this song though because i mean it's a it is absolutely super uh like simplistic in the end kind of just rides on like two things for the entire song i mean as catchy as the instrumentals are and like the vocals are super hard to follow because yeah. he's just like mumbling through the entire thing and the vocals are kind of buried in the mix too a little bit the guitars are really oh. loud like even oh, the yeah oh yeah like even the hook uh, isn't all that like noticeable because of how like just mumbled in it is kind of unless the hook is the ah ah part like ah ah, ah, ah. Yeah. like unless that's your hook that's fine because that's easy to sing along to yeah. but everything else is everything is best repeating now like what yeah. okay <laughs> well I know I know all the words so I mean I can discern them but if you Fair. didn't know the words you're like where the hell do I start what like <laughs> yeah it's like you don't know it's like sometimes when I watch a movie I'm like I have no idea what's going on you turn the subtitles on I'm like oh okay I I, I understand now um yeah I used to absolutely love this song say like you were saying the the guitar is definitely in your ear I love that it was awesome. Kind of go back to what I said with the past song, the comparison. It's kind of punky. Of, yeah. And the comparison of going from something a little, I don't know, a little more reserved, demure, going right into this. You're like, oh my God, it seems like such a push and pull with the tempos where it's like, yeah, it's, it definitely kind of gets your attention again, if you lost it. Um, this is what I think of when I think of a garage band playing something like this and just having, you know, your dad stomping down going, shut up, <laughs> turn it down. See, when I think of garage bands, although it might not fit the bill too well, is Eagles of Death Metal. Have you ever heard of them? Uh, I've heard of, but I've never heard a single song. Especially their first album, Peace, Love, Death Metal. Uh it's obviously not death metal, but it's like, it is super just like bare bones garage rock to me. And I think it's like the coolest fucking thing. Oh, dang. That, that, that's at very least what I think. Maybe we'll cover Eagles to death metal one day. I, they're, they're so, they're so cool. I like them. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, like uh, with fell in love with the girl, like the, I only really have one more note. It, yeah. It's a very fast, energetic track, obviously. And I, I kind of like how this song and this kind of note will come up later in the album as well. I like how like, rushed noisy and sloppy it feels like it yeah. doesn't feel well prepared i don't mean this as an insult at all if anything i'm giving it praise for this it, it feels ill prepared in the way that just like they did it in one take it's like i don't care how it sounded that's the cut that's why i think that it's like the garage band where it's like someone just whipping out a song they like okay you do this 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 okay now let's see how it sounds it, it kind of feels it. like they did they did a demo and they're just like you know what this sounds kind of cool we like yeah. this so we're gonna keep it so the demo became the album like that yeah. was it not too bad and i mean i, I even said like the, the length being a minute 50 especially and the style make it feel like a very lighter punk track yeah like obviously it's not like super heavy political punk track like you know from the like late 70s early 80s and everything like that but at, at the same time like the speed the 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 length of the song because most punk songs usually don't go 
beyond a minute and a half, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, like it just it felt like a punk track. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I liked it. I like the uh, the Oz um, sounds like they're underwater. I like that um, because they were really distorted in those vocals. Yeah. too. When they did that. It was like just super crunchy. Yeah, I I don't mind that at all, especially when you're not actually saying words that I'm supposed to pay attention to. If it's just vocalizing, totally cool. Um, I did just want to say something about the music video. Um, speaking of, you know, the stop motion, how cool it is and the Lego and whatnot. Um, there is a music video by a singer songwriter, Kina Granis, and she did one, I think in like 2009 for in your arms. And she did a, uh, it's with candy and she did a behind the scenes, which is far more interesting to watch than the music video itself. Although they're, they're still pretty cool, but, uh, she has it where she's in it. And she's laying on this plexiglass and they have the plexiglass over her and they are lining up all these Skittles and it's like raining on her. And then it, it's like the Skittles are making the figure of it's so cool, but trying to maneuver and move all of these individual pieces of candy, probably so goddamn tedious. So when I think of like stop motion videos of that, I think of that one as well. And I'm like seeing the behind the scenes. I'm like, I Never want anyone to make another one because I feel so bad for them. <laughs> I wonder how it was like to make Sledgehammer. Oh, yeah, that too. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was another one of those, right? on that would have been cool. And like that was like the 80s. So, I mean, like they didn't have the same technology we do now. Yeah. They didn't have the same technology when they made like A Nightmare Before Christmas. So, I mean, like they really had to work their asses off for that. Yeah. And he's got what the train track around his head. I think too, he's got a bunch of shit going on in that wild. video. Yeah, yeah, it's so crazy wild. to think about. Mad respect. Yeah. So we'll move on to song number five now. Expecting. Okay, I'm going to go first. Um, oh, okay. that's okay. I stayed yeah. silent so you would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, time me on this one. Uh, this song is okay. It seems like it would have been written as a filler. Yeah, I'm not sure. Those are my points. <laughs> I get you five Mississippis. <laughs> yep. That was it. That was it. I, 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 yeah, I have a few on here uh, and I can probably get them pretty quick too, but not that fast. I, I said, my first note was that like, this feels like a, like a sleazy bar band type song. It's got that feel to it. And I kind of dig yeah. it for that reason. Um, although you could say this for any song on this album, probably a lot of the white stripes discography. Meg White really loves that crash symbol, huh? I'm not going to say anything because I say it at least two times coming up. Cool. Well, I said it first. Yep. Like, it's like she has that in the, I, does she even have a hi-hat? I don't know. But anyways, uh, yes. them, does she use it is the next question. Yes. I think that it was just turned down. Like you can hear it, but you like barely hear it. The mic's like directly above the crash symbol and just like, so that's the same mic's picking up the oh. hi-hat. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, mm, yep. Um, so I do like the quiet moments that the, uh, uh, that bridges, like that bridge, the verses, essentially. I really like that. Like you mm -hmm. get these like thumping sounds and then the droning sounds of the notes and everything like that. It's, it's, it's probably the most I've heard like so far in the way of being sonically interesting. There you go. My other keywords sonically. <laughs> I see. I try to fit them in somehow. Every, I have everybody to. mark off your bingo cards or take a shot. If you're over 18, yeah. first one with a full house gets $10. From Savannah. Sure, why not? Ten bucks, that's fine. Cool. Even though it was my note, but in my catchphrase, not catchphrase, just one of my keywords. Yeah, well, thirty-seven episodes in, you're starting a bingo card. You ain't getting your ten bucks. Sorry, you can't. No, no pasties. I would love to have a fan base big enough one day that they start catching on to stuff like this and actually make like their own like compilation videos of this stuff. And just like every time they say this, or every time this happens, or every time they go on tangents, like that kind yeah. of I, that would be like. Holy shit, you guys are paying attention more than I do. Yeah, my, mine would be a running tally at the bottom of how much money I owe listeners. <laughs> oh, man, you're going to go broke one day. Oh, my God. I am going to be, I, yeah, destitute. That's, like, I feel like I half ass like, the best of videos for, like, season one and season two, obviously, will come up when that's over. But just, like, I can only imagine the attention to detail as some compilation videos of some fans I've seen from different channels. They go like they dig out everything. So it's oh, like yeah. if you're if you are, you are you a bad enough dude to do that? Let's see. <laughs> yeah. There's, I watched this wrestling one and uh, it comes out every week, same day. 
but there's always these uh, comparisons of what's happening now to things in the past. I don't know if, if it's a team, if it's just one person, if it's one person, their encyclopedia or encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling to just pull that immediately wild because it's just, they'll do side by side comparisons of like what they're doing the same is wild. It, yeah. Your crazy. hobbies and passions, if it's strong yeah. enough, you can, you can just pull it out despite the fact there are oh, yeah. decades upon decades of wrestling history. Oh yeah. Well, you'll always have fans. So, well, the only other note I have for expecting So keep in mind, it's only two minutes and three seconds long. It's a short yeah. song. The time does seem fine for this, though even just peeking over two minutes, I don't know if this is an open for the rest of the album, but it starts to feel like dragging territory. After only two minutes, yep. it's, it's because, and I, I didn't write a note for it, but I can tell you right now, it's, it's because a lot of the songs sound very repetitive. Mm-hmm. Like just, they they don't really bring too many new ideas to the table per each song and just... You hear the same shit once, twice, three times, and everything like that. And just so that's why it feels like it's dragging. Like you're not giving me anything else to latch on to. So like, what do you expect me to say other than wrap it up? And I shall repeat, this song is okay. There you go. All right. Song number six, the shortest song in the album, if you want to call it a song at all, Little Room. This is the one that I thought was like a sound test. Yeah. Like it, this literally sounds like nothing at all. I mean, like, sure, have your fun in the studio. I'm not going to be a, a Scrooge about it or anything like that. But I mean, at the same time, did this have to be on the album? This feels like yeah. they this this feels like something they do as like the engineer is like leveling the mics and like, OK, just guys make noise. I need to know what's going on. So they just do this to like for yeah. him but for some reason they hit the record button and put this on the album it's just i don't get it uh personally i find it fun to sing myself um it always makes me cough because i just cannot do the vocal i don't know it sounds like he's casting a hex at the end um to me it sounds kind of fun but it does sound like something that you just walk in and you're just like yeah that's off the cuff whatever um, the, uh, the drums in this one, phenomenal. Uh, the crash with the bass drum is just magnifique. I love it. Oh, and um, let, let, let's comment that she does more than quarter notes. She does eighth notes for the bass. Wow. Drum. That's she goes I above and beyond for this track. Um, my last note is I feel like this song stemmed from a vocal exercise. <laughs> That or some sort of improv exercise, either or, because yeah. like you can tell that he doesn't know what he's talking about after a while and he just kind of rambles off a little bit. Yeah, I do and know that, all the words and I will always know all the words, well, but it is very weird to me to be proud of that, I guess. There's not many lines in this, so if you memorize it, I, good for you, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I honestly haven't listened to this album in, what is this, 2022 now, in at least 15 years. So and I've never listened to it front to back. I've, I've been aware of it, but never listened to it. Mm-hmm. My first time was for now. Uh, so now I guess speaking of now, we'll move on to the very next song, the union fever. This song threw forever. me up. The union forever. Does it? Oh, then I missed yes. where it just goes to show how uh, well I'm doing today. Tiska, oh, tiska, and- tiska. Yep. Oh, no, I'm not paying attention like I always pay attention, right? Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. All, but all anyways, yes, The Union Forever. Mm-hmm. <sighs> fever. Why did I think it was Fever? Anyways, um, I believe this song is mostly in like a 5-8 time signature on a super slow tempo. Like, I, I can't be certain because, again, I'm not here on music theory. I know time signatures, but, like, counting this one was so weird. Yeah. I don't know. So maybe I'm right, maybe I'm not. But, like, aside from trying to feel different from this temp- with this tempo and time and signature, like, it didn't really do much for the track overall. Yeah. Like I just, I wasn't feeling this one. It started off sounding interesting enough with the, like the addition of the organ and everything like that, but it got painfully repetitive before too long. Like this one just, this one was like a slog. This one was like a funeral dirge. This was ridiculous to me. Oh my God. Like I, I did like how the course intensified what the verse was doing. So points for that at the very least, like, okay, you picked it up a little bit at the very least. So you're giving me something else. Yeah. Um, and then my only other note is like the acapella part was like a really weird choice to throw in this because it went back to a four, four time signature that felt like really out of place. And it feels like they tried too hard to do something drastically different in the song by like 
you know, getting progressive all of a sudden, changing time signatures and tempos, and yeah. ooh, look at you doing things. It's like, no, you, you felt like, this felt like a try hard moment, and I, I don't know how to feel about it. I don't think I felt any of those things. Um, I did like this one a lot more than I did, pre- like did previously. Again, the slower songs definitely appealed to me a lot more. Um, I did. I really liked the dreamy and like somewhat whimsical guitar at the beginning. That was cool, even though it like pretty much sustained the whole the whole song through the verses. Still liked it. It was cool. Uh, a compilation of me just saying it was cool. Um, it was okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, it the. Uh, this song has a nice placement on the album having come from Little Room. It was just sort of, I don't know. I feel like listening to that song end and then having the guitar start on this one was just kind of a nice flow. I like that. Um, during that sort of storytelling a cappella bridge, I can see that being played live with a sea of clapping hands. Again, Jack's like, yeah, Meg, go grab me an extra guitar or strings or something and then the whole crowd is just clapping and then you don't need the drums you know what the best part about a live crowd a cl- live crowd clapping is they're all out of sync all the time because 100% of the, of the because time. of the traveling of sound like it's going to go slower through the back so you just clap like just yeah, all the way to the it's back like a, it's like a wave it's awesome and that's why you um, never rely on the crowd <laughs> my uh my last point on this is um as I'm revisiting the song, um, I'm I'm listening to the lyrics and it's like when you're younger, you kind of take specific things from songs, whether it's specific lines or, you know, the music rather than the lyrics. And I'm listening to the song going, oh, my God, it means relationship union. Oh, my God. Literally 17 years. And I put that like 17 years later and I put that together. I wouldn't have because I guess yeah. I didn't pay attention. Well, because he's like I'm I'm listening to the song and just the, the I guess the lyrics. I'm it's easier for me to latch on to when you already know them, right? So yeah, just, yeah, yeah. So I'm listening to it going, huh? And then I'm thinking, wow, you're stupid. <laughs> I'm like, this is this is silly. This is silly. But I don't know. I uh, I guess it kind of stands true to the. Every time you listen to a song, you find something new, regardless of if it's three minutes, 26 or 50 seconds long. I'm really enjoying the role reversal here where usually I tell you something about the lyrics and you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Now yeah. you're doing it to me because it's like, I didn't know. And like, I, I'm not doing a lyrical analysis for this or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, now I not only did you correct the title for me, you told me what the song was about. <laughs> Yay, I'm the smart one today. Uh, yeah, I, I must be losing vision in my one eye here because I don't know how I saw fever. Yeah. But hey, at I least it's like, close. At least it's close. Blame autocorrect. Blame that ducking autocorrect. Terrible. I mean, I, I, I could do that, but I I damn well typed it myself. I know I did. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, you own it. You own it. It's fine. Yeah, I might as well. I'm, I'm an honest man. I, I, I have something to uphold here. Yep. If anything, I'm just the same boy you've always known. There was I no was pun. going to make that joke, but I couldn't say it with the word you've. So I was like, I hope he says it. <laughs> Except replace the word boy with man because I'm in my 30s. And if I'm still a boy, we have a problem. Oh my so in God. song number eight, the same boy you've always known. <laughs> um, I do like the feeling of the start on this one. Like I like the nice chill, like calm down that this song kind of produces. Again, like they're good for the lighter stuff too. Like I do like their energetic kind of like garagey, sometimes punky, heavier stuff, but like yeah. this, this is always nice to come back to. Um, but again, like, like they do with a lot of tracks in this album, they revisit that quarter note progression with this one where just like everything is just quarter note accented. Yeah. And it's getting pretty tiresome by this point. Um, I can only imagine what binging the entire discography would be like. But um, I did say good choice for the organ in this track. That had a good flow to it all. Um, okay, I'm just going to read my four or five notes just in yeah, order. Yeah, and I'm done it, too. So if you can get through these quickly, perfect. <laughs> it's it's My notes are always just a flow of my thought process because I'll just write them as I'm listening to it. So uh, again, I like these slower ones a lot more now. I like the clean guitar as it's a noticeable change. 
Sometimes I just wish every beat wasn't on a goddamn symbol. I can see what the White Stripes did at the time, and they were sort of innovative, but this just doesn't touch me like it did before, and I have less of a connection with it. Good song, Sam's the Too Many Symbol Hits. In every song, because again, everything is quarter note accented, or any accent has a symbol on it. So yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. I feel like at this point is when I started to notice where I'm just like, okay, it was fine before, but now I'm just like, okay, stop, please. The, the, really the fact that we had ears. that same note in the same song, essentially, that, that goes to show you how tiresome yeah. the shit's really getting. It's too much. It's too much. It was too much. And like, I could have, I could, I could save this note for later on if I want to, but it's not really in my notes. So I'll just say it now. The thing with the white stripes to me, especially when like kind of listening to Selvin for the first time all the way through, like I get they were like earlier on like to do this, like just the duo doing this kind of like indie rock type thing, whatever. Yeah. But then like you consider a lot of the bands that came later down the road as a, like duos that at least in my opinion did it so much better. Like uh, like you have Death from Above 1979, you have the Carps, the Kills. Like th- those are just off the top. I know you probably don't know too many of those, but regardless, uh, yeah, I, I feel like they did this two person band thing like so much better and added so much more to the sound and songwriting all together yeah. and made it so much more exciting. Whereas like an album like this, I saw the scores this album got and just like, I don't know how it did. Again, I, I'm not shitting on the album, but I don't know how it got like 10 out of 10 type thing. Like, I just, I don't get that. Well, I mean, like sometimes when, uh, when you're on a diet and then that first piece of cake, it could just be plain vanilla sheet cake, but it's the best thing you've ever eaten because you've been on a diet. So maybe if that came out after all of these, you know, uh, Britney Spears and sync all these pop bands in the late nineties, then you're getting something new to hear. You're like, oh my God, in comparison, this is fucking awesome. But then things that came after it, comparing it to that, you're like, ah, oh, it wasn't that good. <laughs> I suppose so, but just like, even like as a standalone for this, like maybe at the time it would have been exciting, but just, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to just solo this album out of my head, but just, it doesn't, I'll talk more about that later. How about that? <laughs> because that's well, like the, the, the album overall. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's why I say it just doesn't get me as much as it did when I was, you know, 15, 16 yeah. years old now that I'm 33. So, huh, spoiler. So. And, and by the way, on the, uh, on the note of diets, uh, cheat day should be once every few days. Don't don't torture yourself because that's how you relapse. Oh, yeah. Hell no. All right. So we'll move on to song number nine. I literally have one note for this one. We're going to be friends. Uh, which was another one of the singles. It's only two minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, mm-hmm. I do like this track. I'll say that. And my note is just as short as this. Very simplistic ballad. Pretty short and to the point. Yep. Uh, that's exactly what I got. I got very straightforward. And it's nice to hear a subtle drum accompaniment without obnoxiousness. I think on such a quiet song. I think that was just like Jack thumping his foot in the yeah. studio for the beat. I don't think Meg had anything to do with this because even in the video, she's literally sleeping yeah. next to him in the video while he's just playing guitar. Yeah. Good, because that's what this song needed. It just needed something to push it along, something to kind of give it a little bit of a little more substance than just an acoustic guitar. Um, super down for it. Um, I used to be able to play this song as well, but a lot of it has sort of escaped me over the last Thankfully, it's easy enough that you probably relearn it pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, my hands don't contort enough. If it's not like a basic, what, E minor? No, I'm, fuck it. Um, that, that's why I own a bass. It's just, you know what, whole notes. That's Learn what I bass down chords. For. Yeah. Whole Get at my level, scum. I have a five string bass behind me. Uh, I have one that's blue. Anyways, excellent. Uh, um, I find this song pretty cute. Uh, normally, I hate very descriptive lyrics, but it's adorable, so I'll let it go because I just imagine it from like a child's point of view. Yeah, it, that's fine. It, it sounds like some sort of like just reminiscing childhood story type thing of just yeah. like you met your new best friend. Yeah, named and Susie I'm, Lee. <laughs> I'm fine with that. There's nothing about it that's too difficult to grasp or to sing. You're not sitting there analyzing the lyrics going, what does he mean by this? It's very, it's Who's out there. Who's Susie Lee? <laughs> yeah, like Silver Platter. Although the name Susie Lee kind of reminds me of like Little Debbie or like, you know, Little Snack Cake name. So every time I hear that, I just think of Snack Cake. It just reminds me of the song Susie Q. 
And oh, yeah. I think a bunch of bands have sang that, so I don't remember where the original yeah. came from. It's like that but, Louie Louie where it's covered by everyone. Yeah. But also I'll say, too, just Jack White's vocals being softer again in this one works for it. I like it. Yeah. So it's all good. I agree. All right. So song number 10, Offend in Every Way. I can play like 80% of this song. It's just when it speeds up in certain parts that my fingers don't don't work that way. Um, practice makes perfect. To, and I don't practice at all. I got to change my strings. Anyways, personal problems. Um, <laughs> Third I like, world problems. I, oh my God. Fucking fifth world problems. My God. Uh, I like this one. The guitar has always stuck out to me. I like how the riff changes just so slightly from the beginning and the end are the same, but the riffs in between the verses, he changes it up a little bit, kind of does a little slide dealio. Yeah. That's what I can't do. Um, but uh, yeah, no, no real surprises or solos. Um, I can't really describe it than anything other than fun to me. Uh, same overdriven, muddy tone, uh, piano bar, piano. I have, I've literally never heard this piano more distinctly than now, but I've always listened to CDs or listened to this album on CD before. So I don't know if it was like mixed differently, remastered or something. I don't know, but I I do not, I do not recall hearing the piano that much on the CD. Uh, And that's all the notes I had. CD quality is perhaps some of the worst you could ever listen to. And so that's why I don't know why in May 2022, as we're, as when we're recording this, apparently CDs are making a comeback. I don't understand why, because it's the absolute worst audio quality you can ever get. It compresses too much of the sound out. It's a very low MP3 style quality. I just, I don't fucking get it. But anyways, that's a rant for another day. <laughs> I never noticed that until this song specifically. And I've heard this song a because you're getting like the full uncompressed times. file more oh, slightly Lord. uncompressed file you're probably getting like yeah. a wave file so you're hearing more of it that's why so that's and why it, it wasn't works so even well. with was even with headphones yeah and i still heard it loud and it, it, like honestly out of this entire album that one specific point blew me away <laughs> the most i was like there's piano <laughs> discovering new shit <laughs> like holy shit but yeah yeah that's it for that I do like how bluesy this song felt, especially like in the opening riff and everything like that. Like I know this kind of stuff pops up through the album because Jack White just loves the blues and everything like that. Like you can definitely tell that through like future projects and stuff like that. But like the opening riff worked really well with this. So that I I had to make note of it because I just really enjoyed it. Um, And yeah, good job of adding keys in the chorus because definitely heard those pianos. So yeah, just, it just fills out the sound a little better. You you gotta love when that happens, especially on a minimal production, you got to find ways to like fill the sound properly. Um, and because of like how most songs are presented on this album, though, three minutes, three minutes feels like a lot longer than it actually is. Yeah. The song is three minutes and six seconds. But because every song on here is like two minutes and some odd seconds, this suddenly feels like you're listening to like Xanadu by Rush, which is. Oh, totally my God. Funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> Although, Grant, that flies by to me because I love that song. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like this song, though, in particular, made its point like a long time ago. So it probably didn't need to be three minutes, but. I guess it is for a reason. Yep. Just yeah, to fill a time sense. space of some sort. Yeah. All right. So we can move on now to song number 11. I think I smell a rat. The intro of this song, I feel like I should be like belly dancing. It's definitely higher, like the higher strings on the guitar. It's very sort of, I don't know. It just sounds different. Um, the uh, <laughs> one of my notes. Okay. I know I always start laughing when I read a a note that is kind of silly, but I always write silly ones because that's all I think of when I, uh, I review certain songs. Um, All it says is definitely a song period. Um, I. How observant. Yeah. I don't know. This one's not like my favorite. It's not the worst, but it's not my favorite. Um, the line, it the no vocal anal or uh, lyrical analysis, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Um, the line, quote, using your mother and father for a welcome mat, end quote, just reeks of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory when the Oopa Loompas come out to kidnap a child. <laughs> and those are all the points I had for this song. Uh, this one feels like 
one of the more different tracks on the album so far. Like, it still kind of has similarities, but, like, it felt different in its presentation, so I definitely enjoyed that about it. It was definitely good how it felt different this time. Um, I like how this one presented and played all together. It has, like, a cool Hispanic feeling to it, more or less. That, yeah, yeah, that's why I felt like a belly dancing or some dancing in a way I wouldn't normally. But to be fair, I had to add this note. I've mentioned this in the past. I'll mention it again. I am geographically dumb when it comes to music, so I could very well be wrong with saying Hispanic yeah. because yeah. I always bring it back to Bungle when I said, like, like, I don't know, Middle Eastern, and then someone's like, oh, actually, it's Gypsy, stuff like that. I'm like, oh, okay, that that's totally, like, not what I was thinking, but you probably know more than I do anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like the big hits of guitar and drum in this song. Like, it really works well this time around. Even, like, even though it's very simplistic, but at the same time, I, I don't know, it just brought, like, a lot of, like, necessary energy without being, like, just too fast or anything like that. So, I don't know. This one in, this one felt different to me. I enjoyed this one, which is nice considering, like, a lot of the songs just felt the same to me. I have absolutely nothing else to add uh, or detract from that statement. That's fine. And from here on out, my notes get pretty short, too. So, I think we're going to fly through this next, like, little chunk of the album here. So, song number 12, Aluminum. Man, this this one was different, and I, I, I'm not going to lie, I did like it. Yeah, it seems like it would have been a beginning to side two kind of thing. You flip it, you listen to this going, what the hell is this? Um, it does kind of feel like an extension of I Think I Smell a Rat, and I think Meg White is giving Jack a swirly in the toilet, because that's what it sounds like. Yeah, it kind of sounds like he's underwater for this one. You mentioned like underwater or something previously in one of the tracks. Yeah. This one definitely. 100%. It's definitely some sort of like wet phasey effect or it's not chorus. It's probably a phaser of some sort or anything. I'm just, I'm trying to go through like my producer head of what effect that could be. And it's Isn't a phaser more... like a laser gun? It is, but it's also an effect that you can use in a digital audio workspace or a DAW, as we say, in the industry. <laughs> oh, please, please, Professor Poor, please tell me more. I'd be glad to mansplain this to you. <laughs> oh, please don't. Please fuck off. Could you please, could you please tell me what mansplaining means? Fuck. Please tell me that you don't know what mansplaining is. No, it's the joke of a man explaining okay, what yes, mansplaining yes, okay. is. I yeah. just want to make sure that you knew, because I would literally oh, yeah. mansplain you that joke. Yeah, oh, fuck no. <laughs> fuck no. Um, so this song to me felt like a very messy little experiment, and I mean that in the best possible way. Yeah. Uh, it's very grungy and muddy. Like, it is just, like, I don't know. Like, I know it's not the same but it reminded me of when we did um, Nirvana's Nevermind, and it was like the last song, which is called End or something like that. It was like the very last song. It was just like this big fucking messy, noisy, like just jumble of noise and sound and everything like that. It's obviously not on the same level, but it just gave me that kind of feeling and everything like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. And yeah, the singing that had that like kind of weird heavy effect on it or whatever it was, Jack White drowning in a toilet. Yes. It, it sounds unsettling, but I really do like it. It kind of like adds this kind of weird atmosphere to the song while just like this muddy, grungy, like just weird riffs are being played and everything like that. So I really enjoy it. It just feels like a, like a bad trip or something like that all around. But yeah. again, I mean that in the best possible way. Yeah, I'm starting to kind of piece together what our ranking lists are looking like and um, don't know how to feel about it. So that was all I had for that song. And I told you off camera, I'm not certain because we, we've we this is the most different we've kind of approached an album in talking about it because of how different it is compared to everything we've listened to. Yeah. It's so minimal that it's hard to say too much about it. So I'm, I can't get a feel for how we feel. So my X is question marks and check marks. Or like I have like a couple of marks all together in the list, but we're going on to song thirteen. So I mean, like the fact that I don't have a couple—that's bad news. Yeah. Well, I, I I hear what you're saying, and whether you say something positive or negative, I kind of look at my score and that's kind what of I do. Yeah. Figure, yeah, so I figure that out, and a lot of it is just a silent. God damn it! God damn it! Because I I want to be able to guess that perhaps we will match on more than one or zero songs this time, but I am consistently, God damn it. During this, uh, out of 16 episode. songs, uh, I'm, I'll just guess two right now. And I'm going to, I can guess that 
non-confidently because again i'm not marking anything down like i do past episodes i'm even though we're not at the song ranking yet i'm just gonna guess two I, I'm going to go ahead and be incredibly brazen because I know I'm going to be wrong anyways. And I'm going to say we're going to match on our sixth one. That's specific. Very brazen, it, very specific. Without saying um, it out loud, I'm just looking at mine. We haven't, I, I can't say anything. So yep. we, we'll see. Well, I'm very curious about that one, actually. Oh, Although yeah. I, I'm going to doubt it. Yeah. Okay, I'm so looking at mine going, yeah, okay, maybe do two, but I stand behind it. I stand behind it just in case. Hey, there's 16 songs, you never know. The odds yeah. are one in 16. <laughs> All right, so song number 13, as if I couldn't wait for our song rankings, I can't wait. Yeah. Right off the hop, I do like the intro. I I I wrote I like the intro riffage, whether that's a word or not, it is today. So it's funny because right off the top I wrote this is kind of where I was tired of this sound <laughs> polar opposite so no this is not our match <laughs> hold on hold on sorry I gotta swallow swallow um, <laughs> god damn it <laughs> yeah yeah a lot of the like the, the compositions feel so similar that I can't really tell where one ends and one begins anymore and this yeah. is another song where I felt that I'm just like like, we've been through albums like this before where I've done the exact same thing. The one that keeps coming to mind is Grapes of Wrath, though, where I just, like, every song just feels the same now, blah, 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 and I'm, I'm kind of getting that. Stop shitting on things I like. I, well, I know we did it for other albums, but for some reason that's the only one yeah. that comes to mind as my immediate example. Yeah, I get And it's, it's going to get to the point where I'm going to forget what I've said in most episodes, so I'm going to forget that I even said that about Grapes oh, of Wrath. Fuck, I don't, even, I don't even know who you are. I forget so much, so. All you need to know is I'm the guy on the other end of the screen right now. Yes. Yep. Um, this song definitely. Okay. So we made a note about earlier about a, like a, a school band or performing in a school type thing. Yep. This song is definitely the more quote unquote high school battle of the band sounding piece on the album. That's really, a, that's what I got from this one. Like this was definitely written by high school kids performed in the cafeteria at like during like a school week or something like that. Just like this was one. The only real big note I have for this one is the hook is pretty catchy, so at least it has that. Other than that, just another song sounds the same, didn't really catch me. All right. Um, so just like I said off the hop, I do like the intro riff. Uh, still a little unsure as the song progresses, but the initial riff was nice. Uh, it was too repetitive as it went on, and my hope for the sparkle I felt at the beginning was sort of lost by the end. Uh, I do think his voice sounds good here, but not every beat needs a fucking symbol. Stop it. That's yeah, it. That's all I have for that song. Again, it's, it's just your quarter note accents. Like, Stop but it. yeah, even like on eighth notes, you'd still do like symbols for both notes. It's just like, but like, stuff. like it doesn't have, it, I, I understand that it's the minimalism. It's the, you know, five piece drum set. Like I totally get it, but like, I am, I want to hear, I want to hear the crash accent, you know, it's like, I want this. And I, I come back to this analogy very frequently where I want the salt to make my food taste better. I don't want salt. I don't want to just eat a shaker of salt. Yeah, you don't want to put the broccoli in your mouth and then pour the salt in. Oh my in. <laughs> God. And that's what it feels like at this point where it's just like, because I'm getting so much salt, it's sometimes feeling it's, unpalatable. Is it making you salty? It's making me really <laughs> fucking salty. Yeah. God. Got to bring those puns back. We're getting pretty weak on them over the weeks. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> that one was unnecessary. <laughs> They're all unnecessary. Even the ones I say so unnecessary. Supposing so. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Well, that was I can't wait. Now Mary. Song number 14. <laughs> now Mary. That yes, I gotta fire them out. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah. Never, song number 14, now Mary. It's a minute and 47 seconds long. Shorter than I fell fell in love with the girl. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but obviously a very different song from that one. Um, I do like the jump back and forth, though, between, like, these clean and distorted sounds in the beginning and like that. I kind of like that weird little mix it's got going on. Made it a little interesting and fun to listen to. This is a, it was like a fun call and answer type of feeling. Yeah. In the song, so I really like that. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I got a little gassy. It's going to sound like a growling dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that was definitely me, and uh, that's what happens when I drink some brown pop. Sorry about that. <laughs> and I'm going to leave that in, too, because that's what I do. Yeah, best of season two. Chris burps. Huh, funny. Oh, I do that right. every episode. If you if, to those on at least YouTube, if you ever like, if you're watching on YouTube, if your audio story, you have to like leave this part out. But if you're watching on YouTube, you see me do this. That's literally me, me burping the quietest I can. Yep. Yeah. That's me all the time. That's me every episode. So take a shot every time I burp. Well, just just as a uh, you know, so I'm on the same level as you. Every time I sit there and I cover my mouth, I'm yawning a hundred percent of the time because we record so late and I work so walking early in the morning yeah and we're turning to ancient fossils here so our bedtime's like 6 30 p.m oh my god <laughs> i fall asleep when the sun's still out and i just have to tell myself it's fine it's it's not the sun it's fine just close your eyes go to bed at like six o'clock and see i i torture myself i go to bed very late and wake up very early for work so like yeah. i'm lucky to get four to five hours of sleep oh my god i'm a That's... sicko Oh my God. Even just talking about it makes me want to go on. Okay. Moving on, moving on. What else? What else you got? Uh, I only have one more note because again, it's a very short song. Uh, it feels very bluesy and folky with a bit of rock mixed in because of like the distortion parts that come in and everything like that. It works well for the length of the song too. Like there's a lot that kind of goes on about this that I really enjoy even for the length. Like, I don't know. This song is better so far than some of the other songs on the album. And given that it's so short, that says a lot about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a lot about it. Um, it does give me electric Hotel Yorba vibes. Um, I do enjoy that. Uh, it definitely is country inspired or like some sort of subsection of country. Um, I do wish that this one was a little longer. I don't know what they would have done with it, but I enjoyed it enough and this is the only track thus far and well we got two more to go so out of the 14 songs that we have listened to thus far i only wanted this one to be longer so, see and, and i, I, I disagree because i don't know what else yeah. they could have done with it yeah, that would have, yeah that would have like justified a, like anything beyond two minutes but i just i wanted it's like it's like you just want that flavor of that food. i'm my all my analogies are food related um it's like you're not hungry anymore. You you're full. You don't need the sustenance, but you just want that flavor of the food. You know what I mean? Supposing. Like I just I wanted more of this. Maybe it's just the more of this sound as opposed to what I was being given before it. I wanted more of it and then it ended and I was like, "Ah, I want more." I Yeah, but I, that's what I'm afraid it would overstay its welcome like I, I don't know. It, it it would feel weird to me that a song that got its point out pretty quickly. And the fact that none of these songs, again, as I've said before, they don't really go anywhere after too long. Circles. So, I mean, like, I can imagine if this went on even two minutes and 30 seconds, it would just be like, yeah. you could have cut this off 30 seconds yeah. ago. So yeah. I don't know how much longer I would have wanted this. Maybe, maybe you're right about just wanting more of this sound. Maybe yeah. not necessarily this song. Yeah. I, I like the um, the sort of uh, I, I don't know how to describe it other than like the the deeper notes sort of country-ish. I don't know how to describe it, but if you listen to the song, you know exactly. probably folky. You're probably because yeah. it has like a folky bluesy kind of feel to it, like most of the tracks on this album do. So it's probably folky that you're thinking yeah. about. It's like the but this song has the guitar that sort of mimics or gets close enough to bass notes than any other song and i think that's what i gravitate towards clearly yeah. um so it was that that i just i really enjoyed that riff that's right too you love bass guitar and this oh, album lacks yeah. bass guitar oh my god i know <laughs> so like listening to to that part in now mary where it's just like do na 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 and i don't know i i am terrible with like pitch and uh whatever anything um but yeah Really, I really like that part. But aside from that, it's all right. It's all right. Well, that was now Mary. So we're going to move on to song 15, the penultimate track. I can learn. Good for you. Okay. I, I do want to read my first note first um, because I feel like you would, you may have a lot to go off this. Um, so if you threw all the other songs on this album into an AI aggregator and it created a new song, it would be this one. Hmm. I, I don't have much to go on about that, actually. It just sounds like the rest of them to me, at least. 
the only the one thing I noticed that was a, a big difference in this one, it had it had a much more dreary feeling in the instrumentals. I guess they use a lot more like minor progressions and stuff like that. Okay. So even with like the similarities of like previous tracks, like this one just felt better for that reason. And again, mm -hmm. I've said before, I'm a sucker for, for sadder tracks, so I don't know. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really have much. Uh, it's okay, but like, what else can I say that I haven't already said like 14 other times? Um, I like the sound, but it felt too long to have given me nothing but the same thing like four or five times. So yeah, again, the song you. is three minutes and thirty two seconds, and on a an album full of short tracks, this yeah. felt like an epic. Oh my god, it felt like it it dragged it drug it. I wish I had drugs. But to be fair, like I guess on kind of a slightly opposite note of that, like it, this song did stretch on a bit, but I never really felt like I got tired of it. Like, I, don't, I don't know. I oh, no? was enjoying this one as it went. Out of all the like three minute tracks on this album, which there aren't many. Yeah. This one I, I felt kept my attention just enough. Like, again, it didn't really do anything new, but I don't know. At this point, like, I guess maybe because I knew the end of the album was coming that I was just more accepting of it. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm into it now because we're wrapping up. This is good. It was good for that reason, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, the idea just yeah. like, it didn't really bore me, didn't tire me. And so I just kind of enjoyed my way through this one. It's not the best song on the album or anything, but I mean, like, yeah. I was more accepting of this one. I can understand that. I can, I can, uh, I, I can't agree, but I can accept and respect it. You can learn. I can learn. Yeah, uh, there you go. You I it. can learn. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the final track on there. If you even want to call it a track, but I guess it technically counts. This protector, two minutes and twelve seconds. This feels like a rehearsal. Uh -huh. Like, uh, like the, the 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 what was it? A little room felt like a sound test. This just sounded yeah. like a rehearsal, like what you do before you go into the studio, just like warm up your like your vocals and everything like that, because they both sing on this one. Yeah. And so, like, this is just what you do, like, as, like, your vocal warm-up, and then you go into the studio and record whatever track you're supposed to. So, like, again, why did you have to put this one in? Like, I like the tone of the piano. It was a very acoustic-sounding piano. And, like, it, it was very much real because it didn't sound like a keyboard at all. So I like that. But other than that, like, yeah, why was this on here? Um, to be completely honest, I always stopped this album before this song came on. I don't know what that says. Um... The piano is nice and I don't hear too much of it on the whole album. It's just sort of little glimpses or peaks here and there. So hearing it on here is pretty nice. It's not cool. It's nice. Um, but Meg White's voice is okay as a novelty, but I just don't care for it too much. Um, sometimes when she's singing with Jack, you can hear it's, it's kind of nice to have that sort of female feminine voice in behind, but when you hear sort of bits where it's just her, it's, I don't really like it as much because it just seems so off. It's like my, it's like my aunt trying to sing happy birthday and she's so off key that you're like, okay, I would rather be deaf. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's not that bad. Like, I mean, I'm going to give her that. It's not that bad but it's just not good enough for me to rank this song higher than where I have it. Yeah. Fair enough. And yeah, it's weird with Meg too. Cause I think there's a song or two in the discography where she actually takes the lead too. Yeah, there's at least there's, there's at least one for sure. Maybe with, two. Oh, I forget what song it is, but uh, she sings. Oh fuck! I I know Holly Golightly's on the on the track. That's all I remember. But I know that she uh, she's not actually that bad on that song. So uh, maybe so maybe, maybe there is a couple things because the one the one I heard she was she kind of sounded sarcastic while she was singing, so it's hard to take it seriously. And I guess that's the point. But I don't know. It's it's been so long that I don't really remember what it sounds like. I'd have to like find it again, and listen to it. I guess I'm looking it up because it's gonna kill me. Uh, well, it's true that we love one another off of Elephant. I think it's the, one of the last songs, maybe. Then, but, uh, but yeah. then maybe that uh, I don't. Again, I'd have to listen to it myself. Yep. But that's for another time for me to do because now we are at the end of White Blood Cells. Uh, even though it's sixteen songs, like again, we kind of flew by those like last five to six tracks there because oh my God. not a lot to say. But at the same time, we are at the end of the album. So thank you very much for getting to the end of the episode with us. Or we're not quite at the end yet, but at the end of discussing the album. 
Uh, if you like what you've heard so far, make sure you hit like, subscribe, comment, rate, share, follow, all those fantastic things to help yeah, build yeah. the musical community. Let us know what you thought about the songs so far, what you have to say about them. We're, we're glad to read them and respond to them if you have anything to say. Fantastic all together, but don't worry. There is more you can say about the album as well because we got to do two more things before we just go ahead and let you go. One of the more important things, ranking the songs. So, yeah, yes, yeah. we have our song rankings. I guess we'll just go ahead and transition to that right now. So, above our heads right now, boom, graphics have changed. There are names. There are 32 numbers. Oh, my God, I got a lot of editing to do, don't I? Ooh. And I have to put in 32 song titles. This is going to be a lot of fun. Anyways, I've been doing it. I, I mean, I think Chili Peppers was 17, so that was 34. That was technically more. But anyways, yeah, whatever. Like crayon into my brain. And I I just take this pencil that I've been using, just put it into my ear until it's, oh, look, it disappeared. Oh, there it goes. Oh, oh, uh, oh my God. Oh, my God. My eyes cross. I just start drooling. Oh, my God. Someone call the ambulance. Okay. Before we start ranking songs, I, you know, I've changed the graphics boom above our heads, as I already said. I want to point out this pencil very quickly. Why do I want to do that is because maybe to those of you who are super eagle-eyed on YouTube, I've been using this pencil since episode one. Yeah, you've been dicking around with it the whole time, too. And I got my own pen because I felt out of the little loop. But this, I have I think I found this on the floor. Yeah, but the best part about this is, like, if you watch the episodes, you watch it get shorter and shorter and shorter. And, like, when I get to the end of the pencil, when I get to the end of the I'm going to have a send-off. I'm Eat actually, I, I could do that. <laughs> Eat, it. Eat it, eraser and all. I will lick all the lead like a popsicle. <laughs> we live in a generation that consumed too much lead okay i already have oh enough god. in my brain oh my god smash cut to the ambulance flying by hell yeah <laughs> all right well well i have to deal with my lead poison we should probably go ahead and uh, start ranking the songs now yes but, so what i don't know i go oh, go ahead and get us kicked off here so as i said before i think we're gonna do two matches because it's 16 we gotta have at least one yeah. or two you would think I I'm going to go ahead. I know that I said I want to match uh, number six, but I'm going to go ahead and say that we're going to get at least one. Now, yeah, that's I do have number a six. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, just a little air uh, sort of uh, margin of error. It could be any one, but you do say that the trend is matches, no matches, matches, no matches. What did we do last week? I cannot recall. And did last we week was Radiohead. Yeah, we did. Uh, oh, nice. We had one. That was no surprises. Oh, fuck. We are screwed for this one. All right. All well, right. no, because we had two in a row, that uh, two two shows in a row that we had matches. So oh. maybe we can upkeep that today. 16 songs. Again, the odds are in our favor, right. I'd hope. All so right, song hope number so. 16, Little Room. This Protector. All right. Protector. And as if uh, we need to keep up any sort of trends for our past episodes, number 15, uh, this protector. <laughs> aluminium. It, it's aluminum. It's aluminum. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it's not aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> it, I was, did I spell this one wrong, too? I swear to God. <laughs> All right. So, number 14, the Union Fever. Sorry, forever. Oh, my God. I'm going to, I quit. Uh, I think I smell a rat. I'll just type rat and I'll know what you're saying. Okay, number 13, I can't wait. Expecting. We're off to a great start so far. We are not. Number 12, dead leaves in the dirty ground. I can learn. Number 11, I'm finding it harder to be a gentleman. Little room. I'm surprised you like that one that much. Like, there's not even that much to it. Yeah, it's just, I, I think nostalgia sake uh, dropped it there. Supposing. Number 10, the same boy you've always known. I'm finding it harder to be a gentleman. If we get, how we are, are we going to so do fucked. Oh my God. Number nine, offend in every way. I can't wait. Yeah. This is crazy so far. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I am offended in every way. Number eight, Hotel Yorba. All right, where's my number eight? The same boy you've always known. Number seven, now Mary. We're going to be friends. <laughs> oh, man, this is terrible. I mean, te technically we have a, a chance here. Okay, uh, number six, I can learn. Fell in love with a girl. Uh, and now we're running out of options. Actually, wait. Let me down. We are now officially zero for 16. That was it. That was <laughs> the last one. Yeah. Yeah, air horn sound bite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Number five, we're going to be friends. 
All right, where is my number five? Uh, oh, now Mary. Number four, expecting. The union forever. Number three, aluminum. Dead leaves and the dirty ground. Dead leaves. Number two, fell in love with a girl. Hotel Yorba. See, I thought that was your number one. <laughs> number one, I think I smell a rat. Offend in every way. You, well, you offended me today. I, I'm offended all the time. Well then, zero for 16. I thought the odds were in our favor because like the higher number albums usually yield at least one. This is the first album that's like 13 plus songs that we've gotten zero on. Well, to be fair, we do have a uh, a trend of flipping our lists. So your number one will be my bottom of the list and vice versa. So There's not really anything on our list that's a, that weird flip. We have a, maybe one or two one-offs and that's about yeah. it. Well, your number one's my number 14. Supposing, but like that's not too far. From, like I'm talking about like top and bottom type thing. Whereas like, yeah. you know, Protector was 15 and 16. Yeah. Fair. Your little room freaks me out though. Whatever. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. What? It, it, we're zero to 16. Perfect. Great. Glad glad that we uh, hit that perfect zero. Perfect round yeah. number. Goose egg. Well, now we have to see how much we agree on the album rating itself. This should be interesting. Uh, maybe we'll be a little closer on this one. So why don't we go ahead, go ahead and transition screen to find out where that goes. So transition, or maybe this way. Alrighty then. Everything has been fixed. Everything has been arranged. To those of you who have been paying attention, uh, the, the deal has finally been settled between Tools Anima and Mr. Bungles California. They both tied at 83.25, but... A split vote between viewers like you or listeners like you led to a coin flip, which led to Tool being the number one overall album. It was a split vote between you and I as well. It was, yeah. You we wanted Tool, I wanted Bungle. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, and that that's what initially led to the 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 fan vote, and then yeah. the fan vote was seventeen votes for both sides, thirty four. So once again, thank you everyone who voted. Thank you very thank much for you. being part of that. Seventeen a piece. Like you couldn't be more dramatic about this, and then a coin flip. Where apparently people are like now drooling over my bare foot because it was in a, it was in a video. Tool one on a coin flip. So there you go. Although they're still technically both number one. One has to yeah. appear aesthetically as number yeah. one and tool is now that. Yeah. And uh, and Chris has told me off camera that every week he's going to rotate them. So Mr. Bung will be number one next week. And the week after it's going to be tool. Don't give as, me more work. As editor, he says that that is something that he is willing, more than willing to do. Editor's note, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the coin flip, it was legit. There was a, uh, there was a, I guess, head. Mm. <sighs> there was a heads up that that was going to happen. Hey, so, many yeah. puns. As soon, as soon as I was going to It's on say Facebook it. if you want to see it. Yeah, it is. So. Okay, anyway, so that was then. This is now. And also, yes, yes, yes. Uh, last week's episode two, Radiohead with OK Computer celebrating that anniversary. We put that in the B tier where it belongs yeah. next to Animals Later and Tripping Daisy. Hell yeah. So that is there. But now we have to put the White Stripes White Blood Cell somewhere on our most prestigious list, if you want to call it prestigious. Prestigious in quotations, I suppose. Yep. You have to go first, though, because I picked it. Is that a fact? It definitely is. It is a trend. Well, I mean, if uh, if any of my notes were indication of how I feel, not that I terribly hated the album, but it didn't impress me that much. So it came out to 66.87%. Yeah, that's fine. Most 69.06. <laughs> I like how you're waiting anticipation and like that was it. Yeah, that's fine. I thought it was going to be in the 50s. So as soon as you said six, I was like, yeah, I'm cool with that. I thought it might have been. I thought for some, for some reason I had this weird feeling like you were going to tank it or something like that. Oh, God, no. No, I, uh, there was a lot of it that I liked. Uh, a lot of it doesn't resonate with me anymore. But the songs that I do like, that I like, I really like. So that means the White Stripes come down to 67.96%. That is indeed C+. So I'm thinking it's got to be up near Nirvana pitch shifter, right? One over. Oh, it it's is top no, of the no. C tier. The other way. Oh, this way. Yeah, between Nirvana and the Eagles. Because of the way I see you on screen pointing, oh. it like literally went this way. So I was like, okay, it's up. 
Yeah, no, the uh, the other Nirvana way, so and Eagles here. Yeah, Nirvana okay, and Eagles. Hey, whatever, that's still fine too. It's a C plus album, just barely, it but is. it's there. It is C plus is better than Fanta. Yeah, more or less, and it's better than. Uh, I mean, any other album that's below C plus, essentially. <laughs> Yes. I've got nothing clever to say about that. But yes, there you go. White Stripe, 67.96% C plus album. And uh, I, I mean, I know this album's apparently beloved, but I, I, I'm sorry. I just don't see it the same way. That's okay. That's how I felt last week. So I, uh, I did rank it. I ranked Radiohead high just be, based on the individual songs, but I just didn't understand the acclaim that that got. So I definitely understand where your uh, your point is on this one. And let the hate mail flow in now. You know what? That's fine. I said what I said. And yeah, I I don't take confrontation. Well, please don't at me. Please don't. Please, I'm weak. I'm really weak. <laughs> As I just said off camera, that's the first time we've had a C tier album in a while. <laughs> I just, I, it's funny because viewers won't know, but li I literally said that seconds before we just came back. Yeah, I'm going to say that right now. Okay. And says it. There you go. And it's, it's there. C plus tier. I'm pretty sure some people might have wished higher, but hey, it is where it is now on our list. But again, it's subjective. Grain of salt. Remember, just that's how it yeah. is. Yeah, exactly. What do we know, right? Not professional musicians. Not even or, professional reviewers. Or, yeah, I was going to say not even professional listeners, to be fair. Listeners, reviewers, musicians, whatever you want to throw in. Professional human, and just not our names there. Human beings. Not even that. I, I'm like intermediate at best. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm an alien. So. But anyways, you've made it to the very end of the episode with us. You've 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 come a very long way with us. A long way with us. Maybe it's been a long yes. way. I don't know. But anyways, thank you very much for joining us. We hope you had a great time watching this episode. We hope you have a lot of opinions that you want to share with us. So remember that you can like, subscribe, rate, share, follow, comment. I said that out of order, but that's okay because it's all the same stuff. You can do all of that. That'd be fantastic. Oh, yeah. if you could really help build up the community, help build us up in the charts, help build us up in everything. Be a part of that community too. Yeah. And if you listen to this this show or any of our past shows and thought, I hate this. These guys have no idea what they're talking about. You know what? Request an album. What? I understand you might not have a lot of faith in what we have to say about your album, but we will listen to your album and, you know, it gets that out there. Because whether somebody shits on something I like, I just want to know that they listen to it and, you know, share that with them. Yeah, if you ever wanted us to be, if you, no, sorry, if you ever wanted to have an extra reason to be even more angry at us, yes, you can yeah. request an album too. Yeah, yeah, do that, please. And to be fairly honest, whether I like it or not, I always take these new things and it, they're in they're in the the mental bank, you know. And sometimes I revisit them, and sometimes they make a new fan out of me. So. It helps me. I am selfish. Thank you. Yes, it could be very special going down the road, depending on how it affects you in the end. Yeah. And hey, even if even if you like or dislike the way that we talked about the album, you can always give us, let us know on like Apple and Spotify, like leave comments, but also give give a five star rating. And but you're only allowed to tell us how much you hate the album if you give us a five star rating. Yes. There you go. Please. It's a fair trade. Yes. Oh, just give us five stars, but then you could just trash on us all you want. It's fine. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Five stars, never listen to again. That's and you want to trash it on YouTube, you can do the same thing. You just go yeah. ahead and trash us, but you have to hit subscribe first and the like button. You got to do all that. F yes, again, please. fair trade off. I, I think that's a, a fair deal. You're not even losing anything in that. Yeah, exactly. You're really you, just gaining. You you spew your toxic toxicity at us because we already did it to you. And then you, you, you just, yeah. you give us rewards in return. It's a win-win. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. It's just, it's, it's a downward circle, you know? But also, maybe you can say some nice things too. That'd be fantastic. And you can also say nice things over on our social medias too. Yeah. All of our social medias, all of our streaming platforms, everything can be found at ratetherecord.ca. So go over there, check it out, be a part of that. And just, uh, you know, follow us on socials and everything. Go to whatever streaming platform you're on. You can find it there. It's all good. Yes, please. But also over there, you can find our Kofi link, Kofi.com slash rate the record. If you want to support the show financially, the option is there. Again, completely optional. We have bonus content coming up, but everything else is free. You know, these podcasts, new music reviews. I love this song. All those videos that we do, free. Don't even worry about it. But other content, who you want to be part of that. So go ahead, Kofi.com slash rate the record. Yeah. Check that out. And of course, the album request, you know, it's down in the description below, but it's on rate the record.ca too. It's just that much easier. We condensed everything into one space Hell for you. Oh, yeah. 
So you can you can find your favorite streaming platform. You can support us on Kofi and rate the, like request an album all on the same page. Mm-hmm. So go, yeah. d- go ahead and do that. It requires no brain power, and all the brain power you do have, you can save for more important things like commenting and subscribing. And- and even if by chance you have a room temperature IQ, it's still easy enough to, to get through. Oh, hell yeah. All one page. Easy peasy. Please, please check it out. All of our hard, hard work putting that website together. Just go look at it. Admire it. Love it. Kiss your monitor. Please stare at it. Stare at it. Well, before we let you go, because we are at the end of the episode now, we do like to let you know or give you a little hint of what to expect on next week's show. And speaking of requests, it is a request next week. And I, I want to point out this fun little fact about this particular request. I, I, I have not talked to this person prior to this, like about anything like this, but the album they requested is something I already had in the pipeline, like months from now. Something that you have not shut up about since we, oh God, what, within the first 10 first 10 reviews you mentioned oh we should i do mentioned this, this, we do this. I, oh yeah hmm i don't remember but anyways i am Wait. excited to do it no it can't be anyway we'll talk about that off camera because yeah. i gotta give this little hint here it is a request i actually wanted to do this one i had it down the pipeline but someone requested it and i got so excited so i it, it jumped to the front of the line. I'm so stoked to do it. And it yeah. is a request for a band that's considered a super group. And it features a yeah. singer that we've had on the show before. Yeah. You've definitely mentioned this. You've mentioned it to me saying, Oh, I should listen to this. And you're like, we should do this. You make it sound like I do it all the time though. I may have mentioned it like oh, once or twice. Uh, I would say three or four times. Yeah. Oh, across 37 episodes. Oh no. What an absolute oh, yeah. like tirade oh, yeah. of words. My memory is terrible. So I only remember the things that are important and all the things that you say to me are important as a co-host. I have to listen and be engaged. I'm going to call bullshit on that. But anyways, while well, I call Savannah out on her bullshit off camera, uh, once again, thank you very much for watching this episode. You have the, you have the hint of what we're going to do next week. So until we see you next time, which is of course next Monday for the episode 38, go listen to some awesome music and we'll see you next time. So take care friends. Bye-bye if I'm not fired. We'll see.